The distinguishing thing about alcohols is their OH, called hydroxyl group, which will simply be attached to one of the carbon atoms that's in the molecule. There are two different things we need to be sure of before we can name the alcohol. In order to be identified, alcohols go by the suffix ol. Like our other functional groups, the location of the hydroxyl group is given by the carbon number in between the prefix and the suffix. So a molecule made up of five carbons with a hydroxyl group on the third carbon will be pentanthriol. The tricky thing about alcohols is that they have a further method of classification, which can affect the way they react. We will refer to the carbon the hydroxyl group is bonded to as the hydroxyl carbon. If the hydroxyl carbon is bonded to one other carbon, we have a primary alcohol. If it's two, we've got a secondary, and three carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds means we have a tertiary alcohol on our hands. One characteristic of alcohols is that they undergo substitution reactions when they've reacted with hydrogen halides. You hopefully haven't forgotten what hydrogen halides are. They're things like HCl and HBr. The idea with substitution reactions is that part of one reactant here, that's the OH group, will be swapped for part of the other reactant, and that's the Cl or the Br. Substitution reactions are simple and easy to understand. All that's happened here is that the OH hydroxyl group has swapped around with the bromine from the HBr. What we end up with is a haloalkane, and this one's called bromoethane. There are three more reactants that we sometimes run into in these substitution reactions with alcohols, and they're phosphorus trichloride, PCl3, phosphorus pentachloride, PCl5, and thionyl chloride, SOCl2. You don't need to worry about which of these three is used, thankfully. No matter which one, all that happens is there will be a substitution reaction, like we just saw, and the OH group will be swapped out for a Cl atom. So just because we can, here's a look at the reaction between propanol and thionyl chloride. The organic product you can see up there is none other than another haloalkane. They sure get around, huh? Which is called 1-chloropropane. This reaction would have produced the same product, regardless of whether we'd used SOCl2 or PCl3 or even the ridiculous PCl5. All the same. You'll have seen elimination reactions before when we looked at haloalkanes. In those elimination reactions, the halogen atom, Cl or Br, would be removed from the haloalkane, and then a double bond would form, and so a hydrogen atom would be lost as well. Now we're going to look at how elimination reactions work with alcohols. We get elimination reactions to work by using concentrated sulfuric acid. Let's look at a simple elimination reaction of ethanol. Do you see what's just gone on here? The molecule has lost an OH from the right carbon and an H from the left carbon, and a double bond is formed between the carbons, which gives us a molecule of ethene. We sometimes call these reactions dehydration reactions, and that's because the original molecule loses two H's and an O, which is simply water. Whenever we have a primary alcohol, we can oxidize it. When we do this, we form a carboxylic acid. Remember, carboxylic acids have a carbon with both an OH group and a double bonded O group attached to it. When we oxidize an alcohol, we need to use an oxidant to get the reaction going. For these oxidation reactions, the two oxidants that you might run into will be acidified permanganate and acidified dichromate. Let's look at the oxidation of ethanol. What we end up with is a carboxylic acid called ethanoic acid. The most important things here are that the OH group has been left alone, that two hydrogen atoms have been lost from the right carbon, and in their place we've got an oxygen atom that's double bonded to the carbon. In general, remember that in the presence of a catalyst, alcohols plus an oxidizing agent 
reacts to produce carboxylic acids. Alcohols can also be combusted, which is another kind of oxidation. Usually this is complete, and alcohols burn cleanly. Alcohols plus oxygen reacts to produce carbon dioxide and water. Carboxylic acids are more like a complicated version of an alcohol. They have the hydroxyl functional group, but also a double bonded oxygen group. Together, we call these the carboxyl group. Carboxylic acids use the suffix anoic acid. And because the carboxyl group can only occur on an end carbon, we don't have to worry about giving a carbon location. So a compound with five carbons and a carboxyl group is known as pentanoic acid. Carboxylic acids are interesting because they undergo acid-base reactions. In general, these form a salt, water, and carbon dioxide. Acid plus carbonate react to produce salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. Carboxylic acids and alcohols are the last types of organic compounds we will be discussing. So take a deep breath and make sure you understand them before we go on to talk about properties.